to you that we live, move, and have our being. Come on, I said it's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. It's in you that we have our being. Come on, let's say it again. It's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. And it's in you that we have our being. Father, I thank you that condemnation is being choked out of you today. Oh, I said I feel something. Here. I said I thank you that condemnation won't be able to sit on your people today. But Father, I thank you that because you love us, you are forever faithful. Oh, come on! I said because you love us, you're forever righteous. Because you love us, you look beyond our fault and you see our need, and we give you great praise. Come on! I need a praise right here. Come on! I said we give you great glory. Come on! I don't care what you came in here with. Come Oh, we have to still praise him. Come on, Father, we give the praise, we give the glory. That every devil's defeated. Come on, I said every devil's defeated. And you are exalted. And we have victory today. Come on, I need somebody to give God a real loud voice to his praise in the house. Oh, come on, I said give God a real loud voice to his praise in the house. Come on, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Is there anybody besides me today that got a praise? Anybody got a praise today? Come on, I got problems, but I still got praise. Oh, come on. I got some issues going on in my life, but when I think about where I should be, come yes, on, you got to talk to me yes, today. God. I said, when I think about what the devil desired to do, and Jesus Christ said, not another further. Oh, come on, I feel something right yes, yes. Tell your neighbors that the devil can't come no further. Oh, come on. You gotta, come on, you got to learn how to, how to speak that over your life and say, come on, I don't care what the devil's desire is, it's already destroyed. For the Bible says that for this purpose was the Son of God revealed that he might destroy the works of the devil. Tell your neighbors that God is about to destroy the works of the devil. Yes, he is. Come on, God is going to destroy the works of the devil that's been trying to work against me. Come on, God is about to do some supernatural in this room. Come on, clap the head and let's give God great glory for what the Lord is doing. How do you come for a word from the Lord today? Because my thing is I feel like preaching today. And anytime God gives you a word that you are excited about, that excitement has the ability to penetrate the people that's listening. And how many of you know that this is one of the greatest seasons yes. that you need to be expecting God to do something supernatural Jesus. in your life? Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. So let's go to the word of God today. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I don't come to teach this or to preach this like a regular preacher. But I come to make a prophetic deposit in your life. Because how many of you know that you ain't seen nothing yet? Oh, my God. Yep. Ooh, wait a minute. I feel so. Yes, I feel, I feel, if I felt like dancing, I'd dance right around through there. Huh? But how many of you know that you have not seen the blessing that God really has prepared for your life? And so Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we're going to read two passages of scripture, two verses of scripture today, and those of you who are on social media, we give God praise for those of you who are on, we want you to tag, comment, and share, because we don't want you to be selfish with this word today. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. So Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we're going to start reading at verse number 1 and verse number 2. When you have it, see, I got it. I got Thank you. The Bible says, and we can stand for the reading of God yes. for you like to stand. For the reading of God's word. The Bible says it like this. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. Somebody say, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. That if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all 
his commandments which I command thee this day. Somebody say this day. This day. Say it again. Say this day. This day. And so that speaks to God erasing everything that took place in your yesterday. Yes. Oh, now I ain't talking in here. Oh, yes. Tell your neighbor, say, my yesterday don't matter. My yesterday don't matter. Come on, say it again. Say, my yesterday really don't matter. My yesterday really don't matter. And if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to do all that he has commanded, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above other nations. Verse 2 says, and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. I'm going to read that one more time. Amen. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Be seated. For the next few moments, I want to talk about listen to the voice. Yes. I want to talk about for the next few moments, listen to his voice. Now, my introduction today is, I want to suggest to every last one of us that everything that seems right isn't right at all. Yes. I want to suggest today that everyone that seems to be a perfect fit may not be a perfect fit for your purpose. Uh -huh. I want to suggest to us today that there are many people whom the God of this world, which is Satan, has infected their faith, yes. their sight, and their hearing. Uh -huh. Let me say that one more time. The enemy has infected their faith, their sight, and their hearing. Yes. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? Yes. And how can he or she preach unless they have been sent? And one of the things that I believe that God is doing in this hour is sending us a sent voice in our life that can redirect the area of discouragement. Uh -huh. I believe that God is raising up somebody in this hour that's going to align you to the will of God. I believe in this hour that God is raising up somebody that's going to unstop your deaf ear. Yes. Tell your neighbor, say, my, my ears need to be open. My ears need to be open. Come on, say it again. Say, my ears need to be open. Because how many people died because they did not adhere to the instruction of the Holy Ghost? How many times have we found ourselves in situations and in circumstances and finding ourselves in battles of our life because we did not adhere to the warning of God that this battle is not ours? Come on, I'm going to pull you right around there. But this battle belongs to God. I came to tell somebody today that you have to be mindful that God is always talking. Always. Look at somebody and tell them, say, God is always talking. God is always oh, come on, say it again. Say, God is always talking. Come on, God will talk to you when you at the club. God will talk to you when you're in a bed. You don't belong in. Oh, I know y'all don't want to say amen to this. But Russian God will talk to you in a time of your life when ain't nobody else talking. How do y'all gotta praise the day that God is still talking to you when you ain't talking to Him? I need to praise you right around through here. Come on, I said, how do you gotta praise that God is still trying to keep you from what you still desire? How many you are glad today that God is talking to you and letting you know that you are not what you did? Look at somebody and tell them, say, I'm not what I did. I'm not. Oh, come on, I come to speak deliverance in this room today. And if this word is just for you, my daughter, I come to tell you today that you are not what you did. And you need to allow 
God to speak to your life and to remind you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I come to tell you that you are the apple of God's eye. I come to tell you that you don't have to settle for what is because what's coming is greater. I need a praise him. Is greater than what's been. Tell somebody, say, listen to the voice. Listen. Come on, don't listen to the voices in your head that telling you that you ain't nothing. Come on, don't listen to the voices in your head that tell you that you're not worthy. I'm talking about me. I feel something here. I said, don't you listen to the voices that's telling you that you are worthless, that you are nobody of what significance because how you know that you are worth saving. Yeah. I'm saying something. Yeah. Yeah. I come to tell you today that you are worth saving yeah. and the voice of the Lord is in this house right now to speak about what God is about to do next. I don't care what happened in yesterday. Come on, the Bible says all things have passed away yeah. and behold all things have become new. So dry your life. Yeah. And lift your head and let the devil know you ain't got the power over me today because he loves me even when I'm not faithful to him. Clap your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you. Come on, we're going to take a moment right around through here and say, Lord, thank you that you're still speaking to me. And so there are many people whose faith are infected. There's many people that dance and shout, but they cannot be committed in the process. Oh, come on, no shout. And I come to tell you today that even in your process, you will find yourself relapsing. In your process to true recovery, you will find that the devil wants to hinder you by cycles. But can you declare the cycle is broken today? Oh, I'm breaking the cycle. I feel a cycle breaking today. Come on, I feel like what you used to be codependent on, you won't be able to use after a crutch after today because I hear the word of the Lord coming to tell you that I'm breaking every cycle in your season. Glory, I praise you. And so the enemy knows that if he can affect and infect your sight and your hearing, then he can eventually yeah. stop you from pursuing your future. Yeah. The devil knows yeah. if I can say something to you yeah. to make you question yourself, then you will give up in the process. But how many of you know right now that God is giving you a confidence and a reassurance that I am who God says that I am? Come on, how many of you got a reassurance that because of the blood of Jesus that has been shed on your life, can no devil keep you in bondage? Come on, I feel God's about to lift the load of our commando shot. Come on, lift your hands up and say, Lord, Free me. free me. For real. For real. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, Lord free, me. free me. For real. For real. Say it again. Say, Lord, Lord free, me. free me. For real. real. Come on, I'm going to say it until they break off for you. Come on, say, Lord, Lord free, me. free me. For real. real. Because, see, you cannot operate in your future without being consciously free. Yeah. You cannot operate in what God is calling you into, uh -huh. battling with guilt and shame. Uh -huh. The Bible says that there is now, therefore, no condemnation Glory out of our shot to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And you gotta know because you are in Him, even when you fall, He will pick you up in the midst yeah. of your fall. And so the Holy Spirit of God told me today, he said, son, I want you to tell every praiser in here that I am about to accelerate their present. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, anybody Thank need an acceleration you. of your present? Oh, Anybody got some stuff that's been on hold that you need God to accelerate in your process? Come 
Lord God, the Holy Ghost of God said to every praiser, as you praise me right now, I'm accelerating what's been holed up in your life. I'm about to accelerate every blessing. I'm about to accelerate every prayer request that you've been praying. I'm about to accelerate your timing. Come on, tell your neighbor it's acceleration time. It's acceleration time. Come on, God is about to make up time. Glory to God for what the devil tried to delay. Oh, I just said something. I said God's about to accelerate time. Glory to God for what the devil tried to delay. What you should have got at the beginning of the year. God's about to manifest it right now. I need every praise. Come on, open your mouth and declare it's acceleration time. Is accelerating. Come on, what God's about to do and be that heal ministry is about to be in an accelerated process. It's about to be an accelerated momentum. Come on, what God's about to do in your business is about to be an accelerated momentum. But God, I cannot do it if you don't praise me for it. Come on, a closed mouth don't get fed. But I come to tell somebody today that if you praise, your present can't remain the same. If you praise him, what God's going to do in your family is going to overtake you. Come on, I need somebody to put a praise on it. Put a, put a real praise on it and say my future is about to be in my present. Oh, come on, I ain't talking in here. I said what God promised me in eternity is going to be at my house by the time I get home. And I'm not just saying it because it sounds good, but I was in prayer last night, and the Holy Ghost told me, he said, I'm accelerating your present to bring an ending to your hindering cycles. And so, we have to trust the voice. There's a lot of people who don't trust the leading of God to do what he say do, but how many of you know that there is a detriment for disobedience? Come on, y'all ain't talking in here. I said there is consequences for making a decision not to adhere to the voice. And there's a lot of people that got praise, but they don't trust the voice. There's a lot of people who are preaching and prophesying, but they don't trust the voice. But how do you know that God will put you in a situation to see, do you hear him like you say you do? Oh, come here, Abram. I want you to go up the Mount Moriah and I want you to go offer up something that you was waiting on. I want you to offer up your only son, Isaac, as a sacrifice. Well, Lord, how can you want back what you just gave me? How can you want back something that I've been waiting on all my life? And what he is saying is, I'm not going to allow you to kill. Glory to God, what I gave you. I just want to see, are you willing? Are you willing to say, I'm going to put myself on the back burner so that God can be glorified? Oh, I feel something around me today, huh? Come on, tell me. So you got to be willing and see what what willingness the root word of willingness is will somebody say will, will. say it again say will. will and one of the things that the devil always will fight you in is your will Ooh, come on you good I said one of the things that, that God told me in prayer time last night was that there are some things that I'm about to do in your life that your will must be secure. Yes. Jesus. Your will and your determination must be I'm going to provide, I am going to do what God say do come hell or how long. I'm going to make it regardless of the opposition that's in front of me. I don't care if I got to cry through it. I'm going to get through it. I don't care if I got to scream through it. I'm going to get through it. I don't care what times I got to cut off. Come on, my will has given me a determination that I've got to move in action. 
Now, the Bible says in John 8 and 48, uh -huh. he that is of God yes. hears God's word. Yes, yes. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me now. He that is of God yes. heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. There's a lot of people that go to church, but they don't hear the word of God. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. They go out of voice again. My sheep know my voice and a stranger, they will not follow. When you know the voice of God, you are looking for his word before you are looking for gratification. Yes. You are looking for his word before you are looking for confirmation. You are looking for his word to give you direction on which way that you should go. I hear Solomon talking. <laughs> Solomon said, Lord, to God, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to what? Your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Well, how does God direct your path? I'm glad you asked me. He directs your path by a word. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. I said he directs your path by speaking to you and letting you know that this is of me versus what is not of me. And there are many people who are in trouble with God because they hear their preacher before they hear the word. Yeah. They hear their favorite prophet. I know you ain't talking to me. Before they hear the word of God. But the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. But his word shall stand forever. You are standing by a word. Your life is here by a word. How you're going to get out of your next season of discouragement is by a word. My God. And so the Bible says, whoever, whoever is of God heareth the word of God. Now, we have to become lovers of the word again. This is what the Lord started dealing with me about last night. Because I thought I was going to teach you something else. And the Holy Ghost said, he said, no, 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 son. I need you to help the people to understand the power of my word. I need them to understand that my word is voice activated. Come on, tell me to say his word is voice activated. Oh, come on. I said his word about I said his word is voice activated and sometimes the Bible says his word is voice activated and sometimes because we are not saying the word of God God is asking have you activated your word have you spoken over your life that it shall come to pass Ooh, la, ba, ba, I feel somebody around you there tell me it shall come to pass Oh, come on, I don't care what the devil said will never happen in your life. The word of God told me to tell you today, it shall come to pass. And that's what the writer Moses is saying in verse number one. He starts off by declaring that it shall come to pass. Now, I want you to see something so significant, and if I don't get through all this this week, don't worry about it. I'll be back up here every Sunday, so don't even worry about it. But I'm just setting the foundation because I want you to understand that shall is a command. I said shall is a command. That means that you don't need to keep asking for permission to speak over yourself. Oh, good God. I said, you don't have to wait on a preacher, on a prophet, or an apostle, or a missionary, or a prayer partner. You can find yourself in the shower saying it shall come to pass. Come on, you can be driving in your car and say it shall come to pass. Come on, you can be in the middle of frustration and in your prayer time. You can say, Lord, give me the power to declare it again. Come on, I know the devil made me feel like I'm silencing myself. Because of my behavior, but your behavior ain't got nothing to do with your mouth. Ah, oh, Jesus. wait a minute. I know a, lot of, I know a lot of people that ain't living a worth a hill of beans, but they know the power 
uh, of life and death that's in your tongue. I know I ain't saying nothing, but God is looking for somebody that will declare, I'm going to say it even when I don't see it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say that I am a delightful land. I'm going to say that death is being canceled over my life. I'm going to say that sickness and disease won't have poverty, won't have power over me. Come on, I'm going to say that dysfunction is over. I'm going to say that my depression won't have entry. I'm going to say that I shall be satisfied. And so, but you cannot say this without first understanding the power of the voice that's within you. I'm not talking about your voice. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you that agrees with God at all times. Oh, did you hear what I just said to you? I said the Holy Ghost of God agrees with God at all times. Time. I'm saying one more again. It's the Holy Ghost of God that agrees with God when you don't agree with God. The Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 19, and I'm almost done. The Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 19, if ye be willing and obedient. Now, those are two totally different processes. And we have preached it in the church wrong that is one process. That because you are willing, you are obedient. Yes. And that's not true at all. Your obedience speaks to your trust factor. Ooh, good Great God. God. I said your obedience says, Lord, I'm willing to step out of the boat on a word. The only thing that Peter heard was a voice. Because he wasn't even sure if that was Jesus. He said, Lord, if that be you, bid me to come. Come on, I know come on, this is the word of God. Yes. And Jesus, the only thing that Jesus said was, come on, come on. You want to come out here to deep territory? Come on, come on. You want your business to boom and to prosper? Come on. You want your ministry to grow? Jesus said, come on. But you got to be willing to stay focused on the voice. And so, Isaiah prophesied. Uh -huh. He said that if you get into the process of your transformation, uh -huh. in the nothing will I withhold from them that's willing and obedient. My Ooh, God. My God. Is there anybody in the room that got something that seems impossible mm -hmm. for you, but you know it's possible for God? And God says, all you got to be willing to do is to put your faith out there. Say, I'm going to go ahead and get the building. Come on, say, come on, because it's almost around that time. Come on, come on. If you be willing, and obedient. And so, I want you to understand that there's still some good in your land. The devil has not destroyed everything good in your land. Uh -huh. Jesus. Did you hear what I just said? What God was telling his people in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, uh -huh. which are called by my name, if they be willing to seek my face yes. and turn from their yes. wicked ways, come on, yes. that's the obedient part. Yes. Then he said, then yes. I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal the land, but God said that there's nothing wrong with the stuff, but there's something wrong with the people's mind. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of people talking like they're willing, but they're not willing at all. Are you willing to walk away from it? Are you willing to just drop it? Are you willing to get out of that relationship? I don't know who I'm talking to on social media right around there, but are you willing to say, Lord, I've had enough? And it's not until you have that experience where I am tired and I've had enough that you can cross over into obedience. Because obedience is going to be very uncomfortable. Real obedience is going to be sacrificial. Real obedience is going to cause you to come out of yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm My God. Yeah. Real obedience is going to
to force you to deal with your stubborn will. Ooh, blah, blah, blah. Lord, help me with my stubborn will. Come on, Lord, help me. Because there's some blessings that's on hold because I refuse to deal with my stubborn will. I refuse to pray without ceasing. I refuse to be thy heel. I refuse to make a decision that I can't 